straight to the point. What are my credentials in this discussion? I have been collecting comic books since around 1984. My first comic book, I want to say, I think it was like Thor 14 or 15. I got to, I can't, I just got to double check when I look at that. Uh, he was on the cover with a hammer swinging it. And it was raining all pouring around. I remember that. I have over 50,000 comic books at least. I've studied Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, all other different types that came along. Um, I mean, I used to read like the Book of the Dead and the, uh, the you know, the, the guides, any and everything I could feed my brain with. We used to read and reread them. I've played the video games. As you see, I have Infinity Island, too. Mule Near, who wants to challenge? Um, huge fan on all of this. So occasionally I'm going to put my thoughts out there on some of this stuff. The Eternals been getting a lot of hate. I don't think it's fair. I think the movie is pretty good, actually. I, the, it's beautiful. I loved a lot of it. I mean, for the most part, I think the problem is people were expecting something. And, and I think that's the biggest problem with a lot of our media consumption today, or at least the critics or the people who run a mouth a lot, is that if you don't do what they expected, they're angry. So, no, that's not how it works. Enjoy for what it is, the piece that's given to you. And this was, I think, a pretty good movie, a really good Marvel movie. That's what I like so much about it. It was a Marvel movie. At the same time, it had more, I felt, it treated the audience with more respect in terms of intelligence. That people, something that Marvel is attacked for constantly. And when, it, and when you do it, then people get angry about you. But I think it was a really good movie. A lot of themes we'll discuss very briefly in this. Um, you know. Five years ago, we're not... I don't know about I have closed caption on either, but, you know, it's been getting a lot of hate in the media. Um, some of it, I don't think, it, I, don't, I don't know, I haven't seen anything that was fair. So I'll get to the parts that I like and didn't like quickly. The Eternals, as created in the Marvel Universe, and for the main part, this is what, you know, is, is be even beautiful about all this. They don't get involved with a bunch of things. Everybody, well, why, why don't you give, well, if you're so powerful, why don't you get involved? They don't. That, you know, they were created. They're rarely used by the creators, but it, hey, they're part of the comic book. Cersei, she was an Avenger for a long time. I love when uh, Gilgamesh was an Avenger, the forgotten one, when he came onto the team for a while. But, you know, Icarus is in and out. You know, Icarus is supposed to be super powerful, but I always see him getting stumped out <laughs> in, the, in the book. So, the movies played out exactly like the comic books. And, and you know, not exactly like, but in a way that, that made sense. So not, not faulting them for that. They're not like, um, you know, to human beings in, in the comic books, they seem godlike, but to the other Marvel characters. And I think that's what became a big part of it. And even the movie talked about that. People were like, I want to get involved. They were not, or you didn't uh, let the, the, the uh, revelation uh, wash over you as it came that, the Celestials in Arsham only wanted them to just make sure mankind flourished. So, yeah, war and everything, that's like pruning and it's going to make it grow. They understand that. It's going to be conflict. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep things moving. Long as they are flourishing. So wipe out the deviants. Your job is done. Wait till uh, Tia Mud is, is ready to go. And I got, I'm, I'm going to make y'all wait to the end, but I got a, uh, my prediction on that. Anyway, so the movie... You know, people, some of the themes I heard, uh, silly stuff I heard was like, oh, they said that climate change didn't, it wasn't real. It was a really uh, a celestial growing in Earth that make, no, the movie didn't say anything about that. Not at all. Earth didn't know a Tiamat uh, was inside of it in terms of, of the movie until it was almost a week before the emergence. So it wasn't like that was creating the decades of what we consider climate change. Wonk, knock that off. The the Middle East don't want to play it because, um, and they, you know, look, my whole thing about sexuality in children movies, don't be beating children over the head with it. I don't care, uh, hetero or homosexual or non-sexual or, you know, any sexuality. 
non sexual that I guess would be fine in that way. I was about to say though, that makes sense. But just don't beat children over the head. That's not what we're here for. And in that movie, yeah, but if they didn't even mention it before, a year before talking about it, how it was gonna have Marvel's first main character with a gay kiss, it wouldn't even be anything. It's to me, it looked like two uh straight actors, I and I have no clue about either of them in real life, uh kissing or saying that it was like, oh, you know, next scene. The thing with uh, Icarus and Cersei, look, I'm, I'm with there with my little boys and wife. I want to reach over and cover their eyes. I was like, oh, Marvel getting down now. I look at, hey, look. <laughs> you know, but that felt, I felt was more of like, ooh, ooh, God, ooh, Disney, they go in there, you know, so yeah, silly things, man. People just be happy in this world, man. That, that's the, the worst part of things is that people are looking for a reason to be upset. You don't have to be. I'm telling you. If you don't believe nobody else listening to me, don't trust me. Never trust nobody else. Say trust me. I'm not saying that. And oh, oh, all my other stuff. Nothing I say is that any of this is advice. This is purely entertainment. I'm talking about the Eternals of Marvel characters. But just to be certain, happiness is a choice. You can choose to be happy. Choose to enjoy the things that's given to you. Show gratitude to your existence. It will enrich you as a being, period, period. That's the secret. So, outfits was dope. The symbols, their, their, how their powers look, the, 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 the pureness of their energy signature. When you look at like Wanda's or um, the, the sorcerers in terms of Strange in them or Agatha is another sorceress, which I guess she would call herself but a magic user or the Bifrost energy you saw at the end with Pip the Troll. You know, people talk about like, who's this? That's Pip the Troll. That's Pip. And Star Fox. Star Fox, uh, Eros, Manos brother, he'd be on one. And at the end, Blade and the Black Knight rolling together. I'm not sure if there's any, oh no, they, yeah, they were together on, um, but it was later, uh, a team at Excalibur, I think during the Secret Invasion. That Blade and um, the Black Knight were on a team together. So that's going to probably be dope. Now, if they do a Disney Plus series with either one of those, I think they could use Blade for movies. But the Dark Knight kit, hey, look, Jon Snow, you still be Jon Snow as the Black Knight. But the Black, look, I like Dane Whitman. A lot of people give him, um, you know, think he's like a lesser character, but he. I've, I've, you know, I, I was, I grew up at a time and read the, the books where, you know, he was a part of the Avengers. So, I like the, I like the Black Knight as a character, and he had that the thing where he had to always be careful because he couldn't, he didn't want to draw blood because of the curse of the sword. Like, you know, torture characters dope, and you know, we we already talked a lot about this. I'm just flicking around while I'm showing some in the background while I'm talking. I feel like I have to do that because, you know. Anyway, the big things I wanted to get to. Okay, so the main points that everybody be blabbering, I just want to uh, go right down. These talking points, have at it if you want. These are my thoughts. I can show a bunch of this because I don't get bothered by anybody. The, so, so, people saying, why didn't they all have the same power set and be super powerful? Well, look, the Celestials made them. They ma Remember the story. The Celestials made the Deviants lost control of them. Of course, they're going to weaken. They want to make powerful you know, servants like they had, but they want to make them weak enough to where they couldn't defeat them. But, and I'll come to that in a second. So that's why they gave them different skill sets to use in, in, in concert together, not knowing or thinking they'll have the ability, because that's how the movie made a scene to form what they would do. Like, So it seemed like they do a unimine at the end of the, the birth cycle of a celestial to protect them to go on to the next or their memories at least and they were able to create their own unimine separate from them. that's different in comic books so you know i'm trying to figure out at the movies how much they're changing it from the comic book so i'm just going off what they showed us so it looked like they created their own unimine but then during the movie they joined with tiamat to make the, the you know had a power to, and, and the energy of how the unimine could be when it could could, could be you know or probably even better, you know, later on. So, 
but the Celestials as a unit made them where, you know, they have different powers and abilities, but not one of them is too powerful to defeat a Celestial or, you know, get or, you know, give them too much problem, but enough to beat the the, um, the, the Deviants. That's my thought on that. Um, they probably rebelled before. They've been alive for millions of years. I can't believe this is the first time they have that that illness that occurs when their memories come back. I believe this happened before. And so that may come up in terms of how it was dealt with in the past. That may bring in, um, cause you know, in the comic books, Athena is um, the daughter of, you know, there were other Eternals who were the parents of the ones that, you know, we kind of saw in the movies. And even Thanos, you know, had, you know, has a brother and parents. So maybe that'll show, this is now me just truly speculating, I'm just not coming up with this. That that their parents rebelled and, you know, they took the children and, you know, we may find out they're not even really robots, that they were humans taken all that time ago and just, you know, used and replicated over and over again. So everybody say, oh, but that'll mess up what I'm my next point, which is that these are parallels to the devices we're building today. We are building artificial constructs yesterday on my daily show. I talked about. Google's Pathwave, which is an artificial intelligence next generation system that can learn many different things and learn from its own self. So this is basically, you know, how our uh, brains work, Pathways. You know, this is how they designed it, literally with artificial uh, synthetic neurons that act as code. So we are building these devices. If we, you know, don't go back to what I just said, not back lately, maybe they're humans. This may be more of the, the robots thing that we're building. Nuts, right? Are we the Celestials? <laughs> okay, and at the end of the day, don't believe anything. It's all lies. That scroll didn't feel right at the beginning. Couldn't explain it. But we found out we cannot believe anything in that. Even Ego may be lying in Guardians of the Galaxy that he's a Celestial. We only see, well, that wasn't in the comic books, but, you know, things can change. But we need to see proof of that. So I'm going with everything's a lie. And I think through this series of movies and some of the other ones that's going to weave in, we'll probably get closer to the truth of the real cosmic hierarchy. And I bet it's going to blow our minds. Hype. Talking about living tribunal, the uh, Ma uh, Lord Chaos, Master Order. Uh, uh, let's get to uh, not only just eternity and infinity, but um, boom, that's the uh, DC I'm thinking of with that. The Stranger. I was saying, thinking Phantom Stranger, but that's DC. But The Stranger. We. I want all. I want. I want all of them in there. I want. I. Mm. Getting hyped. Let me calm down. Okay. Okay. Deviants involved. Now the deviants evolve. My thought process on this was sort of what now. And, you, and some will argue that this has been debunked. The hundredth monkey theory, which if you're not sure or have never heard of it before, is that it's a long story that they, now I'm going to go into the story, but because they feel that that's been debunked. And you can argue all day about that. I'm not going to waste time with the semantics. But the thought is, and I don't think the theory itself has been debunked, is that species, there's almost like a morphogenic field, that species are able to, once something is learned by a group and internalized and will be passed on to their um, generation, that the other species similar to them will, will start to acquire that skill as well. And so the story of the 100 monkey, and I'll just tell the story so you can understand it quickly, is that on this island, there were, um, this monkey learned how to start washing his potatoes before he ate his sweet potatoes, and the other monkeys weren't doing it. And, his, and then other monkeys saw this one monkey doing it. Everybody noticed how this clan of monkeys were washing their potatoes because they saw this monkey. Then everybody noticed how all the monkeys on that little island started washing their potatoes. Then they noticed that the monkeys on the other islands that were not, supposedly not, you know, um, transversible at that point between um, the monkeys started washing their... Uh, potatoes in the water on the other island. So people say it is like, they call it the hundredth monkey theory where once you get to a certain um, point in their population, the skill passes to everybody who, you know, can receive through that. Now you get deep, we can get deep into the, I'm not gonna go there, right? Okay, next, last thing. I think this is last, yes. 
And this is the big one. Take it for what it is. Tiamat will be safely emerged from this planet. Not this planet, because that would be scary if we did have a celestial inside our planet. But, I mean, the Marvel Earth. By the third movie, I'm guessing. But Tiamat will safely emerge. Mark my words. Hold me to it. With that, and I will always do this, because we're about that positivity here. I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matter.